Kristen, that was an excellent summary. By the way, it saves me a lot of energy and happy to explain uh, the fine points, which are in my talking points, but I, I can avoid those now. First of all, I, I'd really like to thank FAN for their advocacy, not only here in Pennsylvania, but what you did as advocates on the federal health plan. Uh, all of you uh, were an important voice in that, your organizations you represent. Um, and while uh, the federal health plan has its imperfections, it's another step along the, along the continuum to make sure that we create access to affordable health insurance for average working Americans. So I want to thank you for what you've done. Um, why is the adult base, basic imperfect? Because my staff is going to start to twitch. I'm going to give you some historical background. When this was created under the Rich administration, um, it was created uh, by a Republican majority who uh, really constructed a health insurance plan that placed the, the, the uh, adult basic in the mostly the four blues companies uh, who have a charity mission uh, that they wanted to fulfill that, that guaranteed the very most basic, uh, even negative basic elements inside a plan. What I mean by negative elements are, as you know, you advocated with me for House Bill 1 uh, earlier this session. I'd much prefer to be in a resource position where we could have the fight over uh, our platform in Pennsylvania because much of what we were going to do in House Bill 1 was undone uh, at, by insurance companies in the, at the federal level as it relates to reform. But I'd, I'd like to be able to provide uh, the adult basic program prescription drug coverage as we were going to do uh, in the House Bill 1 proposal. I'd like to have been able to find wellness prevention programs to put into this to be able to deal with uh, ways that you can save costs within health insurance uh, and make people well at the front end rather than just paying for bad outcomes without access. I'd like to be able to have the dollars that we had dedicated in our partnership on House Bill 1 to be able to reach the hundreds of thousands of people we were trying to reach, but everything changed. Here we are today. Uh, what are we going to do now uh, with the adult basic program that, that hinges on the charity of insurance companies to fulfill their obligation to the community health reinvestment uh, agreement that they signed on with with the Rendell administration? What are we going to do about that? Well, I had a bright idea, uh, and that bright idea was to sit down with them and have a discussion with Tony DeLuca, uh, the chairman of my insurance committee from Allegheny County, and uh, have a frank conversation with them about their reinvestment in that act. I spent a couple of weeks uh, deciding that, um, that that discussion was not going to be uh, of interest to uh, these insurance companies. Simultaneously, at the same time, the federal act was passing in Washington. As you know, these insurance, insurance companies spent hundreds of millions of dollars in trying to defeat the health insurance plan in Washington because they want to keep everything the same. Frankly, uh, uh, part of the reason why I don't think they want to cooperate is because they're unhappy about what happened in Washington. But let me say this from Pennsylvania's perspective, that uh, the House majority uh, that I represent is not interested in watching 50,000 people be dumped in the street because uh, we'd have no health, community health agreement that can't be reached. That's not what we want to see. So the way we have to look at the adult basic program is a little bit different than we had to in House Bill 1. We have to look at it as a bridge between today and 2013, 14, when the Federal Act kicks in. Um, when the Federal ki Act kicks in in 14, we'll be able to create the platform that we hoped for under House Bill 1. Today, the Adult Basic Program needs to be that crucial bridge between here and there. How does that get done? Um, I'm introducing legislation I did already uh, that will uh, deal with how we get there uh, in cooperation or not with the Blues companies. That uh, on May 4th, the insurance company, the insurance committee, and Mr. DeLuca will have a hearing on that bill. I hope that some of you will go and watch that discussion. I think partly we need to understand what the insurance companies 
um, are, may attempt to do in the broader marketplace between today and 2014. In meeting with the insurance department and other advocates for, for those who need health insurance, it is pretty clear that during the, this period of three years, there are many aspects of health insurance for vulnerable populations that we should be very concerned about. There, is, there may be attempts, like in this case, to not meet fundamental charitable obligations to vulnerable groups who need health insurance. That's a perfect example of what I would call adverse selection, or really taking themselves out of investment, disinvesting out of charitable programs because they know they're going to have to pay in 2013. My point to all of you is that in the, in the commercial marketplace and in other areas, you may see similar adverse selection with vulnerable populations within current insurance, private insurance out there during the same period of time. We have to be extra vigilant as, as advocates for insurance and for vulnerable populations of people in Pennsylvania because frankly, if, if my intuition is correct, um, now, knowing now that what the insurance companies know that they lost their lobbying battle in Washington, that they're going to be in a much more aggressive stance as it relates to the transitional period. 